All right, welcome to Startup Hacks. So I'm sure everybody's been talking about DeepSeek. You're all wondering about AI, and I know there's a burning question in all of your minds. Can you get this to run on a Raspberry Pi? So I'm gonna go through a pretty transparent video with you guys here. Definitely gonna be winging it a little bit, but let's dive in. And I'll tell you about what I found when I try to run DeepSeek on my Raspberry Pi and including with some AI hardware on there. Let's dive in. <laughs> All right, welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thomason here at Startup Pack. We love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. With over a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. So I'm super excited about that. And so of course I go and try to look and I'm like, woohoo, 1.5 billion model. We all know that I love small AI models because this I think is where the, really the future is. You can show me all your big fancy fat AI models that maybe like 20 different companies have enough money out there to actually run on. Or you can show me some really cool stuff that I can get running at my house to write with my developers and myself on too, right? So one of the very first things that I dove in was to take a look at these and did this. So I went out and started looking for some AI hardware because I knew there was some out there and I'd run across some of this before. So this is an AI kit, right? And it comes with, uh, and so it has the Helios chip, right? The AL accelerator with up to 13 T ops, right? Trillion operations per second comes with this hat. So what this is, is an M.2 slot uh, that goes into the M.2, you know, expansion board. And then this goes in and then the AI chip goes into the M.2 slot. So I was pretty excited by this because it's compatible with Raspberry Pi or already got one of those right now. I want to get my hands on one of the 16 gig models, but the one we're using for today's demo is the eight gigabyte model, right? So I'm using an eight gigabyte model. So of course I excitedly wait for it to come and I took some pictures here so we could go through my unboxing with you guys today. So you got my dusty old uh, Raspberry Pi 5 over here that we've done some demos on before. So if you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel, make sure you go and do that because uh, I teach tons about coding and also about hacking a lot of this stuff together. So it comes with these riser posts. This I've already put the AI chip into here, sorry y'all. And then also these riser pins for your GPIO boards. Uh, another picture, a little more close-up picture of the chipset itself with the M.2 seed, uh, seated into the board, right, into the uh, M.2 hat. And just for any of those of you who are wondering here, these are a bunch of really cute puppies because we love puppies, right? And these are actually some of our puppies right now. My wife actually works, uh, produces high, high-end labradoodle puppies. So I knew everybody wanted to know about puppies. Anyways. Um, so I took the board here and uh, started to build these out. And so I attached the board, um, these riser posts, and this is with all of it attached. Give you some good detail view here, right? So you can see my fan still runs underneath there. When this starts running, you will hear this thing spin up, right? You'll hear the, the CPU fan definitely start to spin up as it tries to cool this off. This is a picture of the ribbon cable coming from the M.2 hat down to the board here. And you can see I am running with a, a, just a, a really fast, I went with the actual fastest uh, compact flash card that I could find. I don't really find that IO is really the bottleneck on the card. Um, eventually I could probably upgrade and we could probably do one of these that have two, hat, two hats where you're running an actual M.2 plus this, right? Um, I think that's just the other side of the board and here's the top view of it, right? So this is what it would look like so that we can still access some of these other ports as well. So this gives you kind of a good view of what the board looks like. So let's dive into what everybody really wants to know is how, how it performed. All right, so I'm logged into my Raspberry Pi here, right? And, you know, not much that I can, like, show you it running. Like, it just runs. So it's sitting over here on the desk beside me. But I'm SSH into it here. Um, and if you want to see how I've uh, set it up, I mean, I think there's about a trillion different, you know, open Raspberry Pi. So um, the tutorials out there. So go get yours set up. I just use a standard default Raspberry Pi. From here, you download and install Olama, right, which uh, we all use, Olama list. So these are the models that I have out here, and these are what we're going to show you and demonstrate today. We're not going to go into the Llama 3.2, Phi, Tiny Llama. We've talked about these before. Go check out my previous videos. Make sure you like and subscribe. All right, so we're going to talk today about the uh, Olama 1.5, right? And I'm going to run this guy in verbose mode, right? So you can see what it's running here. So that, that came back pretty quick, right? That wasn't too, too, too bad. I mean, this is, again running on something that's over here beside me that's about this big and uses about, you know, less energy than my laptop, right? So why is the sky blue? Okay, so you get a couple think things, right? So that's not too bad, right? That's coming back pretty quick. 
um, even in your faster models, especially on these, it's, it's going to come back pretty quick. But I actually still was a little bit uh, disappointed that it wasn't coming back faster. Now, you probably can't hear it over here, but that uh, the Raspberry Pi is over here spinning up. Uh, I don't think my cable would reach over to the camera, but so this coming here and I'm doing this real time and talking through this just so you can kind of can kind of even see I could pause the video and then show you, but ultimately here you're seeing that we're running just under nine tokens per second, right? So the eval rate is nine tokens per second. I'm like, that's still quite a bit lower. So as I went out to do my research, it turns out that the NPU or neural processing unit that is on these boards actually don't support OLAMA or LAMA CPP. So I actually spent some time and tried to compile down LAMA CPP and actually doesn't support them. So this is actually just running basically off of the bare metal CPU. So they're actually pretty good, right? So let, let's get a little bit crazy here though, because, whoops, not bite. Um, let's get a little crazy here. And uh, let, let's try to run the 7 billion model, right? So if we go to Hugging Faces here, let me get that Hugging Faces up. So actually when I go to Olam and I look at the model here, right? Olam uh, says that we've got a 1.5 billion parameter and a 7 billion parameter and then the 8 billion and 14. I know a lot of people are reporting that the 14 really seems to be where things cross over, but you're gonna have to have a 24 gigahertz graphic, or excuse me, 24 gigabytes VRAM graphics card or something around, you know, uh, you know, a pretty solid amount of RAM if you're going to try to run it with a server software and RAM. I think most people find that it's pretty, the simplest way is to do this with a $1,000 uh, graphics card, which the 24 gig graphics card right now is a 3090, seems to be the best one. Um, and you can do that. So I'm going to actually make another video about how I get that to run off my Raspberry Pi. But that's a different day because I'm not that much of a glutton for punishment. So what we're going to do here is actually try out the 7 billion because that's our next sized ones, right? So I've already pulled down the 7, bill, uh, 7 billion model, which is 4.7 gigs. So let's try this now with the 7 billion model. And let's see what our, what our benchmarks are, right? And this one I'm probably going to speed up because this one will take a little bit of time. So I'll probably pause the video and, uh, and show you guys uh, what the, the benchmarks results. Because even just starting up the 7 billion model is taking me definitely much longer than the 1.5 billion, billion model. All right, so that did take it about a full three minutes to get that started up. So now that it started up and I'm gonna do the same thing, why is the sky blue? Now, this may be cheating because I've already answered this. So let's try it. Let's try to think of another good reason. How are cats and dogs different? That's a good question here. So let's see how long this is gonna take. I'm definitely gonna pause this and let this come back here in a second. So you can tell it thinks, coming back and it's rendering I actually didn't pause that that actually came back faster than I expected it to but let's see what it says here because I think it's kind of just giving us some gibberish here the, the model the pie is definitely spinning up those fan turbines just turned on so let's see what it comes with and let's see what the ending rating is okay so that seriously took 11 minutes and 54 seconds now it did work Technically it did work, but it's so obviously would be nowhere near any kind of production ready because with 11 minutes and 54 seconds to generate one answer at 1.57 tokens per second, that's definitely not going to be fast enough for anything useful. So I'm going to continue to, man, I keep doing that. I'm going to continue to work on this. I'm going to bring you two different ways. One, I'm also working with a contractor to try to get the NPU programmed up so that it can be using this because with the NPU, we should be able to run somewhere right around that 7 billion model. However, uh, and then another thing is, is there is a way you can actually attach an external graphics card onto it. So make sure you like and subscribe because I'm going to continue to build on this. So stay tuned because there's going to be even more of these videos. And as always, uh, if you're company needs help building out software, reach out to us because I work as a fractional T CTO with companies to help them build software so that companies work like a well-oiled machine. And here's another offer we have for you. Want to become a software developer but don't want to spend four years in college and rack up massive student loan debts? Think you need technical expertise to get started? Welcome to Startup Hack, a better way to start your software career without student loans and years without income. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is included so you never get stuck and have guidance through the whole process. No technical experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace and in your own space. Startup Pack has worked with local state agencies in your area to make it so that qualifying students can get the program costs covered entirely and students can start earning while they learn. 
Startup Hacks.net Coding Bootcamp was a game changer for my career. As someone with no prior programming experience, I was initially intimidated by the idea of learning to code, but the instructors at Startup Hacks broke down complex concepts into easy to understand lessons and provided hands-on projects that really cemented my understanding. The curriculum was comprehensive and up-to-date and got me ready for my first job. What really set Startup Pack apart was to focus on practical, real-world skills. Thanks to Startup Pack, I landed my dream job as a .NET developer within weeks of graduating. I went from knowing nothing about code to building professional grade web applications in just a few intense months. If you're looking to break into .NET development or level up your coding skills, I cannot recommend Startup Pack enough. Complete our three month coding boot camp, gain hands on experience, and land a paid internship. With two years of experience, on average, our graduates are making over $80,000 per year. The three month program includes technologies from Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. No debt, just a quick path to earning. Check out Startup.